Jacob Markstrom, a shutout rat, his first of the season. Never mind he had like eight or nine last year at this time, when they needed him the most, with what? the help of a crazy offside ruling. His first shutout of the season, a one nothing win for the Flames over the Minnesota Wild, and the afterburner curse. I don't even know what that is, Red. It's, it's done. It's old news. Why don't you have your kid like two months ago? If you're Jacob, you should be planning yeah. around the season. You Think want that about, second half push. You, you got to do a better job of planning this shit out, man. Like, clearly, it was hanging over your head, and now you're ready to play. I just kept thinking on the couch, like, he looks so confident confident oh. and comfortable and, and the opposite of what we've seen for the vast majority of the season where he's overplaying, diving at pucks, looking small in the net. You know, emotions seem to be even more prominent than they are with him on a normal basis. And then there's this guy, it's like, he's like Zen staring into ponds in some, you know, like uh Japanese park with little trees and guys playing flutes. Like he's, he's totally completely relaxed. He's Zen. He's, he's Jacob. Back. He's Jacob Markstrom. Look out. Uh, what a wild finish in Minnesota. First off, this was the second of two games in two nights and I am not particularly good at U S uh, geography or geometry. As someone would suggest, Dallas ain't close to St. Paul. That was a really tough back-to-back -back for travel, I imagine. Dallas is deep south, and I feel like St. Paul is just across the border somewhat, you know, really close to Canada. So Had no. on the broadcast, 1,400 kilometers, something like that. Hmm. And that's a team, Minnesota. I know they, they weren't at their best. They had a stretch of a month there where they didn't look themselves. But the way they play, the pickups they made, the goaltending they're getting from – Gustafson, I would Tough want out. nothing to do with them in the postseason. And make no mistake, that was a two-point theft from the Calgary Flames, who were handily outshot and outchanced on this night. But in a rare occurrence, their goaltender was better than the other guy, and it wasn't by much. No, that's the thing. Gustafson was good. I don't think the Flames does. Well, they didn't deserve the two points. Markstrom deserved the two points, and they're fortunate to get it. And at this point right now, we're ecstatic to see Markstrom find himself. There's two. Yeah. What have we said now? Probably if he was Four playing five. his normal self, there's probably five wins that the Flames are missing. He had eight so, or nine shutouts at this time last yeah, year. Well, we don't even need a shutout. Just yeah. don't sieve out, right? Yeah. Like. Give us, give us this Markstrom for two more months. Yeah. We're talking about a home ice team. Well, and to be fair, they have three games until they're a month from the end of their season. So, you know, it's not even two months. But, yes, two months would be great if he wants to. <laughs> the first no, game, the I, the I'm month. saying give us this two months ago. If we had this two months ago, if we had, like, we would, if he's playing like this at Christmas till now, yeah. we're, a, we're a home ice. We're a home ice team. You might be leading the division. Now, good to see people in the comments. There's uh, Dean Molberg with Pinder Stinks. And Dean's a, Dean's a vet. He's worked with me for a while. <laughs> I, this is the second or third set of clothes I've gone through that I've been sweating through. I am gross today. We're going to power through. If the Flames can find a way to win in Minnesota when they're out chance to no shot like that, we'll be able to get an afterburner in. Eh? Are you ill? I might be ill. I'm, I'm going to do a COVID test when I get home. I, I told I you to get the nebulizer. Yeah, well, I sat in the steam room for 20 minutes today. Thought that might help. Day Quill, let's go. Enough about me. Um, thoughts on this contest? Tyler Toffoli with it. Kadri with a big goal that, that allows him to do it. And, and Toffoli, before he won it, hits that crossbar in the third period. They didn't get a lot of chances in the third. It really looked like they hit a wall in terms of energy. They weren't bad. They just they couldn't uh, hang with Minnesota's energy level. They hadn't played since Saturday in Calgary. But uh, he he could have won it earlier. It was well, a, it I think was it's game. what you expected out of the game. The Flames are going to have to hang on and play simple and hopefully take advantage of opportunities. Gustafson was good. Toffoli's the only other guy in the Flames uniform that's, well, he's the only guy that's looked comfortable all year. Yeah. And uh, honest to God, when he got it on a sick in overtime, I'm like, yeah, he's not missing. In the shootout, yeah. I really like Sorry. Backlund this year, and I wanted to give a major um, tip of the cap to Jacob Pelche, who no matter where you put him, yep. I mean, he's just so poised at the puck. And I get young guys are quick, and they might be able to score. 
this is a very mature profile for for a player that turned 22 today. Uh, you, you see him in tough spots. He doesn't turn it over. He hangs on to it. He makes an if little play. He finds it someone that's wide open. Pressure's relieved. Like he, He's not turned it over. This has not looked like a rookie in any sense. Well, and you know, give Daryl credit. We, we complained about him not playing him and not giving him a chance, but He's playing him in overtime. He's given put him at the top of the lineup where he needs to be and deserves to be. So yep. I, we can't criticize his usage of Pelche anymore. And Pelche is doing exactly what he needs to. I'll take more points, but I think he's being effective and productive and noticeable and all the things you want a young kid to be providing you. Yeah, there's, we could still critique the two shifts in the final six minutes for the fourth line, but we'll save that for later. Let's get right to it. Our toast of the game for BK Beaufort Liquor, located right across from Winsport, COP, Pascapoo, whatever you call it. You call it Pascapoo, right? Do you know what Pascapoo No, is? I don't. Do I, yeah. What's Pascapoo? That was before the Olympics. It was called Pascapoo. And then Canada Olympic Park followed that. Now Winsport is, is the name. You know where it is? By the mermaid, by the clown, that last... Uh, I guess what would you call it? The overpass right across from Winsport there. Zip in, grab some delicious craft beer, wonderful wine selection, fine liqueurs. I know you'd be into some whiskey if you were heading out somewhere uh, fancy into the mountains. Don't be let down by mad booze. Grab some good stuff on your way out and say hi to man deep in the gang at BK Beaufort Liquor. You see the email address right there, bkbeaufortliquor at gmail.com. Not going to be... Uh, a tough one tonight, I don't think, Rhett. Uh, who are you cheersing or toasting on this uh, Tuesday in Minnesota? Hmm. Let's think about it for a while. Clearly, Markstrom gets your cheers, your toast, and all of the above. Pour the champagne on his head. Mm -hmm. He's the reason for the victory. He's been a lot better of late, and I know the numbers are haven't exactly jumped off. Don't care. Team, but it's wins now. It's, it, it, it's a tough it's, win in Dallas. It's a tough win in Minnesota. Relief against Boston after Vladar put them down 2 nothing on a couple of shots or more love. And I didn't mind him at all against Toronto as well when Marner was buzzing. They only lose that one 2 one. If anything, he hasn't got any run sports. He's got one goal body, four. And his body's language, like you mentioned earlier, just it is a different human being behind those pads. It's night and day. And I wonder if you could relate to seeing that with Dom or Van Beesbrook or Kipper. I mean, it felt like Kipper was always Zendo. Yeah, and I just don't... to see a guy and know he's on tonight. It felt early and you didn't want to curse it with Markstrom because there's been a lot of unexpected turns this season, but it just seemed like earlier, like this might be the night. He, he, this might be shutout number one for Markstrom. Yeah. And I, I mean, I wasn't even thinking shutout. I'm just thinking how he's in it. You can see his body language is, is full of confidence He's comfortable. He doesn't look fatigued like the rest of the team. And he looks like a guy that wants to have the net, whereas, well, as little as three weeks ago, yep. it looked like a guy that was ready to pack it in. Just send me home for the for the, for the rest of the year. I've, uh, I've lost my mojo. Yeah, Colorado, uh, I guess a couple Saturdays ago, that to me was, you know, what they did too early. It was, you know, it was two on four, but it was – Kinnon right away and look that's a good team but it looks like a different goalie than that guy two Saturdays ago well and I've been fairly harsh on the team and if you're gonna look for hope and opportunity it had to start with Markstrom yep. and he's giving you that now there's there there's a glimmer there there's 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 a path forward and he's going to have to keep it up and he's going to have to play lights out to get there. Yeah. But if he does play the way he did tonight, they, you can squint and see it. Yeah. Calgary Flames win one nothing in the shootout. What did you think of the offside call in overtime? Is uh, I, 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 I well, I think that probably by the rule of the law, it is offside. I just think it's a stupid. It's another one of those rinky dinky. Why are Why are we making that? Like he doesn't have possession of the puck. Come on. That's ridiculous. Yeah. At he's full done. speed, you're like, he's got possession. You slow it down, it pops off a stick for a second. I'm like, ah, I still think that's possession. No, I don't. Well, think that's just it. You skate it down the ice from, you skate yeah. the, down the ice from one end to the other. How often is it? It, it it's not on your stick the whole way. Like, yeah, it's stupid. But I'll take it. Catches take that it. pass a touch softer, softer. Maybe they allow it, but it's not his legs going in first. I think everyone listening to this program knows that it's that they deemed he lost control, and that's a pretty harsh ruling for me. I'm just always confused why this league that 
you know, in their head offices are like, man, if we could just get more scoring, I think, you know, this would be good for our business and revenues and non-traditional markets. And how do we get more scoring? What rules should we change for more scoring? And then it's like all the ticky tacky off a of skate, you know, there's an offside 30 seconds before it goes in for a league that loves offense. That's one that would be really easy to let stand. And Flames fans are happy. It didn't tonight. And maybe this is a little bit of karma for all the games they've dominated yeah. and knocked out bounces and lost this year. But I wouldn't be surprised if that's one of those things they clean up at like a board of governors meeting in the next couple of years. Yeah, that sort of play should be. I mean, he's got possession. He's making a pass. Like it doesn't have to be touching a stick the whole time. I, I'm all. I'm. I'm happy. I'm happy it went away, and I didn't think it would at first. And then you look at it, you're like, no, it left his stick. It was off his stick for a split second while his feet were in the offensive zone. So I guess by the rule of the law, you're going to have to call it no goal. I just. Yeah. I've been hurt by those before in bigger situations. Think? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So it's four out of four points, Rhett, on this two-game road swing, and it comes on the heels of a 3 nothing loss to Minnesota at home, which was a winless homestand of three games. They get one point in that uh, moral victory against Boston where they were down 2 nothing, claw back, blow a third-period lead, and then lose in overtime. Markstrom was great in that game. It feels like he's turned a corner. Four out of four. And Markstrom may be the biggest reason if there's any belief at this point. I I, I wonder what if you, you see him in net against Anaheim on Friday. It's a bit of time off, but they also are playing every other day for a while now. They go Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So for the next week, once they get home, it's every other day. I wouldn't be afraid to ride the guy that finally is looking like the oh. theoretical perennial Vesna guy. He was second in voting last year and his final season in Vancouver is fourth in Vesna voting. You have to ride him. If you're not riding him now and you're trying to manage his fatigue level, you're shooting yourself in the foot. He's playing like that. He's looking into it. He's excited. No, no, he's got to play. You, you win, you're in. I said it earlier today. There's no change in the goaltender when he plays like that. Yeah, we've been asking for this for a while, late Jan. Does anyone want the crease? Just go ahead and yeah, string some W's. It's, it's yeah, crease for a while. It's there for you. First back-to-back -back wins, Rhett, here on this uh, Monday, March 6th and 7th, since all the way back January 21, 23. That is, uh, that's about six weeks. <laughs> that's it's before the All-Star break, that's for sure. The last time they had three wins in a row was way back to early December. They beat Washington, Arizona, and Minnesota all at home. Interestingly, Vladar was in net for all three of those after they came back from that tough road swing where they got pumped by uh, Carolina, Washington. What a run on, boys. You have a, you have a list of teams that you can go out and beat if you show up and play. Like, I, uh, They're not going to hand you the two points. But if you can go out and play and get goaltending, play with the effort, don't have lackluster, don't be soft, don't take it for granted, go play with a purpose. There are games out there for you to win. The goal is going. Uh, I think the lines ain't perfect. I'd love to see Walker Dewar back. I still don't know about Nick Ritchie. He takes uh, three penalties through five periods as a flame, three through six. Now he can say, get, get Dewar in. Please. And two of them ozone. That's just maddening stuff. Uh, it was a lazy, dumb penalty in Dallas last night. You're hitting a guy square on the numbers. He's not in a dangerous spot about the score. And then tonight, two ozone penalties. Um, Nick Ritchie remains Nick Ritchie. He is yeah. not where he is because he's managed his tools well. <laughs> he is where he is because he's still got those damn tools and he's still not putting it together with good decision making. So no, and you're not. In, there. The coach won't love what you've provided so far. So I think first opportunity he gets to get him out of the lineup, he will take it and sit him. Markstrom is our cheers of the game for BK Beaufort Liquor, located across from Winsport. Stop in, say hello to Man Deep, grab some uh, spirits, wine, craft beer, and more on your way out to the mountains. Uh, Man Deep, be excited about that W. He wouldn't be excited about uh, Lucic out twice in the final six minutes. This is just Daryl, right? We can't keep railing on this. This is just how he goes. It is just Daryl. I would, uh, I give him somewhat of a pass today, only because of the travel and the fatigue that yeah. you were seeing and everyone else. I mean, I, I'm not, I, I'm not loving it by any stretch of the imagination, but I, I at least I see some rationale behind that decision on a yeah. night like tonight. Sure. Or, and I don't even know if he's looking at the situation tonight. He's just rolling forward. That's how he's Maybe. going. 
And uh, Reeves had the good chance when they were on with six minutes left. They survive a shift with three minutes left. How did Reeves miss that? Did you see a good replay of that? Oh, well, that was Reeves. I think that's why it was missed. That's <laughs> the hands aren't soft when you no. use punching. Yeah, fair enough. Um, wanted to ask you about the Ryan Hartman slash. This was very early in the game, and I, I don't want to guess at why things were happening, but Rasmus Anderson was all over Kirill Kaprizov early on. Um, and Hartman took a pretty egregious ex uh, exception to, you know, just some jostling post whistle. Rasmus didn't do anything too dirty. And he comes down with a pretty hard tomahawk and then sucker punches, I believe, Trevor Lewis in the face. A thought on what you saw there from Hartman. Uh, he nearly won the game, too. In fact, what he set up the could have been winner. Yeah, the non goal goal. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I, I know he's a guy that's known to have a short fuse, but I, I just thought there, there could be something going on that we don't know because that feel, felt like it was going zero to 60 really quick, period one. Yeah, I don't. I didn't pick up on anything that made me think that Hartman had to flip out there, but he was pissed off about something. I mean, I, I, you don't want anyone getting injured and you want to – Gets punched in the face. Oh, whatever. I, yeah, mean, I don't mind the punch. That, that slash could bust an arm pretty good. Yeah. I'm surprised well. Rasmus shook that off and didn't miss a shift. He was out there at the end of the power play on that second unit. Um, I wonder if we don't hear something about that tomorrow from department. Yeah, he'll get fined for sure. Yeah. And again, it's like a kind of meaningless scrum, and he comes in with the wang. Like, uh, I think what, we had a Paul Bunyan reference from Rick Ball. And I don't... Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to freak out about it because I wouldn't freak. If one of our guys did it to someone yeah. else, I'd be like, good, get the bastard. But so I'm a bit of a hypocrite if I'm going to start screaming obscenities at Hartman for slashing a guy that pissed him off. It was harsh. It was hard, but. I got the double minor. It's yeah. just a shame they take that penalty on it. They, score. That to get up yeah, early, right? Yeah, score and win the game there. Neither power play obviously scored with this going 0-0 zero, zero to the shootout, but 4-4 four for four were the uh, Flames penalty killers, 5-5 five for five for Minnesota at last check. And, uh, yeah, that I, I think both goalies were great. Marsham had to do a lot more than uh, Gustafson. And how about the spot that Wilder in the summer retro where Cam Talbot says, I don't want to split the crease with Marc-Andre Fleury. I'd rather you move me. And they somehow pull out Gustafson, who is second in the NHL by a lot of measurable and goaltending statistics. And I think it started like nine of the last uh, 14 or something. Well, like, like we talked about Markstrom, his body language just reeks of confidence. He's like, yeah, whatever you got, bring it on. Shorthanded early on, it was Backstrom sliding it over to Elias Lindholm. And rather than lunging to his left, he, he kind of just shuffled over, didn't even drop to his knees. And it was like, oh my God, like this guy's <laughs> feeling it. Like, yeah. <laughs> Two on one short handed and it's zipped all the way across and he's just there. I'm like, what? He's not sliding. He's in position. He's still on his skates. He's feeling it and he's yeah. playing fast and good. You'd be real comfortable if you had him in your net for, if you're a Minnesota fan. We, uh, we missed the boat this morning on barn burner with our betway bets of the day, Rhett. Um, I think Dino yes. had uh, the Caprice off anytime uh, power play point. Like I had as well. That one was close. Didn't end up happening. As the penalty killers were nine for nine in total. I think I had a Pelche anytime goal. He was around it tonight, didn't finish. No one had a goal, only shootout goals. Why weren't we on the under? We did just watch these two teams on uh, on Saturday, and it was like one nothing midway through the third. Because I didn't know what the over under was, or I absolutely would have. It's really gone back to Minnesota on a Tuesday. As far as the I feel bad. I've been hyping up Minnesota. I'm like, they're actually fun to watch. And it's like, well, the wow, they were, pretty, they were pretty, they were pretty tonight. good tonight. I mean, it was I get, still wild on a Tuesday. Yeah. The flames were tired. And I think the wild played well and benefited from a facing a fatigued squad, but there you can see talent there. They're a good squad. Yeah. Um, okay. Buy it or sell it for Derek Newman of Newman Dean's Real Estate Group with CIR Realty. Here is my buy it or sell it. I will make a statement. You either buy it, you're in, or you sell it. Nah. They're not fucking dead, Brett. They're not fucking dead. You're not dead. If your goaltender plays like that, you're not dead. You're buying it. You have a 40 safe shutout performance. I don't even know exactly what the shots were against. 42, yeah. 
Do you have a fo- goalie that's going to stop 42 shots a night? You're not out of it. No way. Not, not with well, how many now? Well, 17 games left and you're back four. I don't yeah. And you got a head to head with Winnipeg. I, with yeah. a team that's faltering and, and stumbling hugely. No, you're not out of it. But Markstrom's got to play the same way. Now, I will say this. the It would be very flamesy to follow this performance up. Four points out of four on yep. this road trip. Anaheim, first game back. You're, you're not out of it, but yeah, you know, you're not out of it, but you're nowhere near where you need to be. You have to have a – I said it the other day. I said you need five in a row. Yep. You have to have well, five wins in a row. And a then chance. You, you, then you're giving yourself a legit shot. Chance for three, Friday, Anaheim at home, suddenly feeling like a pretty big game. That's followed up by Ottawa on Sunday. They've been a mixed bag lately, really hot since the new year, but just got blanked 5 nothing by Chicago. On that topic of, of they're not fucking dead, um, we're both buying it because here's, the, here's what I can tell you about their schedule. From this point forth, they have 17 games left. Ten are at home, seven on the road. It's not a huge, you know, one side way bigger than the other, but you'd rather be at home. It means less travel. Also, they've got six versus playoff teams, 11 against non-playoff teams. That might be the one for me that really stands out because I think it's probably easier to overlook, um, say, Chicago in January 3rd than it's going to be for Chicago on the 4th of April when if that thing matters, you're going to be playing. Yes, except Ottawa game. just lost to uh, Chicago 5 nothing or something. Ottawa is the one that scares me because Ottawa is fighting for a spot. Yep. And for some damn reason, they've been a tough out for the Flames. So yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm a little bit worried about Ottawa. Alex will be all excited if they beat us. And we'll have to – I don't know what we can do to him. He's far away. Anyway, I th- I'm, I'm worried about Ottawa. I think they come back. I think they're – they're feeling good, and I think they can get a win against Anaheim. I'm worried about Ottawa. For some reason, I got that one circled. If you could take care of this mini homestand, Anaheim, Ottawa, you're into Arizona after that. And look, this is not a team you can go counting chickens just because you see eggs. I, I am not suggesting there are two foot putts this group is comfy standing over. There have been some white knuckle, horrible wow. performances, gross efforts against some of the worst in the NHL. Chicago at home. Columbus, they needed overtime. They lost in Columbus. They lost in Chicago. Uh, Philly at home, better effort early, but still yuck result. Uh, this is, if there's a, something to take away, they haven't been great against bad teams, but I think you'd probably rather face bad teams right now. And, and they got 11 out of their next, their final 17 against non playoff groups. The biggest team. issue you might find for the stretch is that it, it's not up to you. Right, like it's you need help to get there. It's not a matter of just when and you're in. Winnipeg's got to falter for yeah. you to they, like it's a combination. So even if you play well, you still have to outwin Winnipeg to get there. Uh, you're giving yourself a chance now with these two victories that I think shocked a lot of us because of the lackluster effort against the Wild at home. And then even the attitude and the responses to the media afterwards were downtrodden and defeated. But two quick wins and you're back home against a Ducks team that you think you can beat and and a goaltender that's looking hot. Hey, this this is it. I guess it changes quickly. Yeah, it's it's off till Friday for the Flames. It's the opposite story for the Minnesota Wild, who Flames fans will suddenly be cheering for tomorrow night. They're on a plane to Winnipeg tonight, Rhett, and that's not huge travel, but it is interesting because that's the team. I feel like if there's someone prone for a slip up, it's the Wild that excuse me, it's the Jets that have just two wins in their last ten, uh, and Minnesota if, if they get give forth an effort like they had tonight, that's not an easy game for the Jets. There'll be a lot of Flames fans watching. Uh, cheering on the Wild tomorrow night. That that they're four back now. Jets have a game in hand. Minnesota could do you a favor tomorrow night. That'll be something to keep our eye on in the out of town scoreboard. And so as you said, you, you know you don't control your fate, but no one's going to run the table down the stretch. You you string together four or five, you, you're going to be in a good spot. 
work to get to the point. I mean, I don't know what the the projected points for playoff making the playoffs is, but I yeah. think that's what you focus on right now. Okay, we got two more tonight. Yeah, we got to get two more on Friday, two more Sunday. Start chipping away at what you think points wise you got to get there. And if Winnipeg continues to falter, yeah. well, now you're you're feeling pretty good. Typically, that ninety five point mm-hmm. range is where it's like okay. There's been a couple teams in 20 years that haven't got in with that number, but most years that gets you in. And Winnipeg was on pace to best that, but I mean, they they're just not feeling it right now. You know, they blow a, a lead of one goal with 12 seconds left last night, and then see um, that's the pro- you, like you need a good run though. That's what's that's a 12 and five for the rest of the year. Yeah, and again, it's it's 11 teams out of their last 17 non-playoff. Like you got to get on a heater here. There's no doubt about it. This is not going to be win one, lose one, play 500, moral victories. It's got to be a heater. But all of a sudden, it's two in a row, and it's Anaheim, and it's Ottawa, and it's Arizona. That doesn't mean you're going to beat those teams just because they're, they're not playoff teams. Ottawa has been particularly tricky. They had a two goal lead in Ottawa in the third. Still couldn't close that one out uh, in Canada. I want to say like a month ago. Yeah. So it'll be tough, but. Uh, we're, we're both saying it. They're not fucking dead. Buy it or sell it. Sorry, pardon for the language. Derek Newman, <laughs> Newman Dean's real estate group with CIR Realty. Give him a call, would you? It's phone number 403-619-6611. You're buying or selling. You got a pal in the real estate in, in, uh, industry with uh, Derek Newman of CIR Realty. Newman coming out with his master's pool soon. Isn't the master's yes. coming out? Stay tuned for that because uh, we might be partnering on said master's pool. Get some big prizes. We already got a golf course that's involved with the broadcast. Oh. 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 And you've been uh, teasing us that you might be back in you know, beautiful Alberta, Western Canada soon enough here. If uh, could, Do you think we could drag you out to golf on the warmer side of the Rockies? <laughs> Not quite yet. Mama said it was colder than snot yeah. back home, so I got to make sure we're ready for golfing. But soon enough, I'm in. Shoulders are feeling good. Okay, so put us in the headspace of the players. It was two blown leads in Dallas, but you do win. You thought you'd lost. A lot of the guys were in the room. They had to literally push the stick rack back out tonight. They then went in a shootout. Tyler Toffoli with a couple significant goals. One with 6.2 left to beat Dallas. The other, round four of the shootout to get you two points, not one in St. Paul tonight. You're off till Friday. Tomorrow's an off day. They won't get home until, well, what time is it now? Yeah, like they're probably getting in at 2 a.m. here. Off day tomorrow. Where oh. where, where are the spirits at? And and what are you, you know, looking forward to? How does that make you feel about this group? Well, the- I feel a hundred times better than I did three short days ago, I yeah. guess. Right. Like, and that's the, uh, I'm excited about it mostly because I like how Markstrom looks. I think that I, you, this team is built around a great goaltender yeah. or supposed to be right. Or good goaltending, not, they aren't built to, to score five a game. Although I think they're more talented than what they've, produced this year yeah but uh, by and large they're built to be more of a playoff style caliber team that's deep down the middle and has really solid goaltending that's where you're you're supposed to win well you got the goaltending now and if everyone else can get excited about the opportunity that's ahead of them and they can get on a roll then i mean it's fingers crossed i'm way happier about things now than than like i said last week but it's I don't want to get them ahead of myself. And I think that's probably where the team is, is yeah. this is all fine and good, but it doesn't mean shit. If Friday night we're flat and, and we start letting in bad goals again. Yeah. Make no mistake. As good as things feel now, if you lost to what might be the worst team in the NHL this year in Anaheim at home, you lose one like nail. In the car. Yeah. You lose one game over these next three and you're now they won't be thinking about three games and it'll be playoff mentality already of win the next game, win the game, next game. And, and that's how it should be, but they can't lose any of these next three. Not in my opinion. Again, Winnipeg could sh- crap the bed and be terrible so maybe that saves you a little bit but i think if you do that then you're giving nashville a chance to climb above you 
Like they still have games in hand, and they it's true. If they win out, they can beat you out. So I would think the mentality of the team is great road trip, get home, get some rest, kiss the new babies, give mm-hmm. them a hug, spend some time with the family. When you game, you know, go get a skate Thursday, and when Friday's here, get your asses ready to go. Yeah. Off day tomorrow. Practice, as you noted, 10 15, 10 30, excuse me, on Thursday. We'll see if there's any line tweaks at that juncture. I understand they're on, messing, with the, messing with the winning lineup, but I, I'd love to see some Walker Duro out there. And I don't know that Dubé's long for the fourth line, but if you kept him there and had Walker Duro, there's a lot of pace. That would give some teams some headaches. Yep. We shall see. Barn burner tomorrow. Uh, thanks again to our sponsors, Betway. Also, Derek Newman of Newman Dean's Real Estate Group of CIR Realty. And, of course, our good pal, Mandeep, from BK Beaufort Liquor. The cool. silk mitts and the wonderful craft beer and wine selection, right? It's Can't wait to have home. a pint with Mandeep. It's the full package, my friend. He's an absolute beauty. Thanks for this. I know it's later in Buffalo. We'll have uh, a couple barn cool. burners. We've got a trick for you, a little treat on uh, Thursday for Ask Rhett, by the way. Shut up, Molberg. Uh, Pinder, go get a nebulizer. And get some hydrogen peroxide and breathe that shit in. You're going to feel better in no test. Come on. Take care of yourself. Hey, Dean, we said we'd do half an hour. That's 30 minutes and 55 seconds. We're now working overtime. Look at him. He's chirping. Why aren't you sleeping, you old? Like, go to bed. I guess it's only 930 there. (laughs) Yeah. 930. That's Thank you, JP. Yeah, Dean, if Dean's going to be up at 2.30, thumbing out tweets, he's got to get yeah. to bed right away here. Real. So. Okay. Yeah. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you, Retro. There it is, Afterburner. We'll see you tomorrow on Barnburner. Flames win one nothing in dramatic fashion in the shootout. Back from the dead after it looked like they lost in overtime. Four out of four on the road. Next action Friday at home against Anaheim. Thanks for watching.